Hey guys, I know it's been a while, so I just thought I would give you an update on what's going on in the SEM build. As you can see, we've gone on a long way since the last video, and the biggest accomplishment that I've made is the vacuum system is now almost finished. There's still a few leaks in there, but there's some new equipment here that I want to show you. So the vacuum system consists mainly of this, there's only a few parts here, so in this diagram here, the chamber would be up here. Um, to begin, the roughing pump is used, and that gets out most of the air within the chamber. That gets out like, just don't quote me on the number here, but like around like 90% of the air inside the chamber, maybe more. Um, but to help get down to pressure though, we have another pump. It's a pump booster. It's called a diffusion pump. I've done a f I think I've done a video on this in the past. If I haven't, I'll put one out there it's next year sometime. But um, the way that works is there's a jet of oil, and uh, through, um, through momentum transfer, the, uh, the particles of air are literally knocked out and taken to the roughing pump. Um, a few differences from this, from my original setup. Um, in this one, I have a um, isolation ball valves and bellows within them, uh, between the diffusion pump and the rest of the chamber. Um, basically, when there's oil in here, and the way it works is that oil is actually boiled. In the old days, they used mercury, and that was less reactive. But now they use these, um, uh, I think they're silicon-based, but they might be organic. I'm not petroleum-based. I'm not sure. But the point is, is that if air is let inside the diffusion pump when, they're, when it's still um, hot, um, the oils will corrode due to the oxygen. So it's important to... You either have two options. You either can um, let the diffusion pump cool off, then release the air back into the system, or if you want to actually get in there and don't want to wait for the whole thing to cool off, you can isolate it using these valves, which is what I'm actually doing. On the other side here, we also have a roughing pump valve. Um, this is necessary because I want to pump down the chamber, then open up the diffusion pump. And for the diffusion pump to work, air must be flowing down it and through it to actually pull out the air which the diffusion pump knocks down. And I want all the flow to be going through here and not through this side. So that way I can close off this valve system. Um, on the diagram here I have a penning gauge. Um, right now my penning gauge controller is... I'm having a little cord issues right now with it. So right now I have a uh, Pirani gauge on it which is working fine since I'm not going down a super high vacuum anyway at the moment. Um, I also have the bellows here. Uh, that's just try to help keep the oils down. Uh, after all, we're dealing with boiling oil in here, and if any does splatter, I want it to be caught on the bellows and not going right up, right up into the chamber. Um, bellows, okay. Um, there are other ways you can do it too. You can cool it down like a baffle. That works better. But I don't have a baffle, and this seems like the second best option. I also have an electrical feed-through on this diagram. I don't have it on the chamber right now. I took it off because I'm trying to hunt for a leak right now. Um, and I have a vent valve right here. So let's go look at the chamber and let's see where this stuff actually is. Okay, so to start off, right here is my Edwards roughing pump. This is an Edwards II. Um, it's a really good pump. I got a nice deal on it on eBay. It's been refurbished. Um, I believe it pumps down to 10 to the minus 3 tor. I have to check the specs on that. It's somewhere around there. Um, but overall, it's a really good pump. A lot of It's actually overkill for the size of this chamber, but that's okay. So right here is my vent valve, which I actually have a little vacuum under here right now. But it has a thermocouple gauge right here. This is just a really cheap thermal couple gauge uh, for um, uh, air conditioning and um, units. Uh, for air conditioning testing, excuse me. Um, going up here, this is my ball valve. It's an isolation valve for the diffusion pump, which is right there. This is a um, Edwards diffusion pump. Um, again, got off eBay. It's a very nice little pump. 
Um, this particular unit is air cooled, so there's a fan back there and it blows um, air through these um, cooling grid right here. The oil is actually uh, heated up down here in this chamber and it gets pretty hot too, uh, pretty quickly. And it's turned, out, turned on through this little switch right here. Um, above that is a um, uh, Varian Bellows um, valve, so that isolates, finish the isolation for a mother diffusion pump. And right here are the bellows. On this half, we have the uh, roughing pump uh, valve, so this can turn on and off the roughing pump system. And below this was the uh, electrical feed tubes, but uh, I've taken them off since then. Sorry guys, this was the um, uh, electrical feed through right here. Um, it's a uh, con flat flange, we got multiple pins right there. And um, there you go. Yeah, it's a good, it's really good system. I took it off just because um, I was leak hunting and I was wanting to make sure this wasn't it. And it is not, so it's somewhere else, but I'll get on that later. Going into the chamber, there's the Edwards gauge, which is right here. This is the Pirani gauge. There's actually a, I can't find the little tiny, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, space on it. Anyway, the thing that actually connects this holds it on. I'm, I'm missing it for some reason. I don't know where it is. So it just hold, held there through a little vacuum pressure right now. Um, both of these pumps here, this is the diffusion pump bellows and this is the roughing pump, they go up into the chamber. Um, right next to this you can, we can see some of the uh, spark plug leads which are hanging down. Um, and I'll get on more to the connections in another time. Looking at the actual chamber now, we have some hardware in here. You notice this is actually a different base plate than my original video. In fact, you probably will notice that all these parts are different um, than my original video. So, uh, my original base plate was, uh, it wasn't, it was poorly machined. Um, not to say this one it doesn't have its flaws, but um, I just wasn't impressed with the way I laid things out and wanted to change some stuff, so I scrapped that one and I had a local person do this. Um, it's a little bit bigger, gives me a little more room to operate on, which is really nice. Um, next to these here are my, uh, my Pirani gauge and over here is my penning gauge controller. I don't have a penning gauge on here yet, but this thing is I'm trying to get the connection right. Um, right here, just this is a um, works off a, um, a British plug, so we use a transformer here to get the voltage right. The filament housing is actually something I had a custom machine out. I used Proto Labs for that. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, Proto Labs is a fantastic uh, uh, machine service. I would highly recommend them. So. I'll actually show you what these parts, parts look like in some pictures, but this housed the filament, and below this is a crude uh, Wenalt um, plate. Um, I just made this out of a uh, just a sheet of aluminum. I actually want to machine a real one, but um, again, I kind of ran out of time. Um, below the Wenalt is a uh, Maycore ceramic plate. Um, why I chose Makor is that it's um, it's non-porous, so it's not going to trap gas molecules in there. And also it's pretty easy to machine. So inside this I drilled a hole to house uh, this right here. This is the um, this is the anode right here, machined from Protolabs as well. Um, it's pretty simple. All it is is just a little cylinder with a uh, small little hole in the end. That hole is about one millimeter in um in diameter. So what that does is it sits inside there and the electrons are boiled up here in the filament. So the anode here is held at a very um high positive potential in relation to the uh into the cathode. So what happens is after electrons are I hate to say boil off, but we don't call it that for right now. They are attracted, accelerated towards the anode, then are fired down into the um, 
into the rest of the electron optics. So this is basically how a uh, TV works or a cathode ray tube. Um, it's really simple.